Lately, I've been having the feeling, and I won't say it's an overwhelming feeling, but it's a strong feeling that's backed up with some degree of inscrutable conviction. And that feeling is that I am not long for the world, that death will come to me soon. Now, when I say these, when I say this, when I say these things, I want to make it clear I'm not saying that I feel like I'm going to end my life because I've already made it clear elsewhere, I think in several places elsewhere, that that is not something I intend to do. This is not a feeling of wanting to die. This is a feeling of, well, it's a feeling that things have run their course, that things have run their course and that it's, it's getting close to being over. I know I'm not that old. I'm in fairly good shape. Nevertheless, this is the feeling that I have. And I guess it's a feeling I've had for a little while. It was the subject of Notes Before Death, which I wrote a few years ago. I think three years ago when I was 44. I'm 47 now. And that book was motivated by somewhat the same feeling, but uh, but right now I just have the, the sense that, you know, things are winding down. Like uh, it's getting to be about that time. I mean, I'm feeling like I would imagine somebody 30 years older than me might feel. Somebody who's 77 instead of 47. But I am nevertheless authentically feeling this way. And I, I'm not completely sure why. I think it partly has to do with uh, the notion that there aren't a whole lot of prospects for me right now. And the, the feeling that it's, uh, you know, like when you're young, you feel like you've got so many experiences ahead of you. And when you're old, you feel like you've got all these experiences behind you. And that's how I feel right now. Like all these experiences are behind me and there's not much ahead of me. Now, again, one would think that I would not feel that way because after all, if I'm in good health if, and I seem to be in good health, you know, I could stick around another 30, 35, 40 years, who knows? And I, again, I don't intend to take myself out. But I wonder if you can seek out an ennobling way to die. It doesn't involve offing yourself. I mean, I guess that, you know, if it's a time of war, if you're fighting for a cause that is just, then there's something thrilling about the notion of giving of yourself for this, this just godly cause. And there are always things to fight for. There are things to fight for every day if you look for them. But 
but I mean, I don't have a plan in mind of, uh, you know, taking part in some risky activity that might mean the end of my life. And I don't, it wouldn't be responsible for me to do that. Being that I have two children that I need to be around for, but there's still this general sense that it's um, drawing to a close that instead of expanding before me, things are contracting. Things are contracting before my eyes. And I guess that a part of this is related to the state of knowing of the state of knowing that I don't belong anywhere. I called this the uh, eyesore in the architecture in an article, and it was actually a part of Notes Before Death, but uh, it was published as an article a few years ago. It was an excerpt from it. And that details how it feels to just be somebody who, as I put it, as an eyesore in the architecture, who's just, you know, when you're around other people, it's kind of like they're, they're, they just say to themselves, well, you're, or they're thinking to themselves, we would all be so much more comfortable with ourselves if this man wasn't here among us. And, uh, certain things just reinforce that whole conviction. You know, I'm, I am a low status male and I hold to being a low status male and I am proud to be a low status male. I will continue to be a low status male. But when you've got low status, you are very much exposed. And people can take liberties with you. They can be unkind, unpleasant, unwilling to listen. And they feel free to chalk it up to you because you are, you've got that stench of low status about you. So you can be dismissed. If somebody else came along who said the same thing that you were saying, but who was high status, then they wouldn't feel, uh, they wouldn't feel like they had the same kind of permission to behave the way that they behave. But, uh, when you're just somebody who is viewed as dismissible, because who are you anyway, then I mean, you can bear it with dignity and I, and I do, I try to. I bear it with dig dignity, and again, I'm not ashamed of any of it, not in the least, but it wears you, wears on you sometimes. And I don't know, this somehow relates to the feeling of impending death. It's, um, I guess it, it, it uh, when you are low status, you are, uh, your prospect and you get, and you're old, you know, you're getting older, your prospects, as I said, contract, and you're aware of them contracting. 
and uh, you see the way it's going to be. And well, I mean, I guess it could be, it could be dispiriting. It could be depressing. Whereas if you were somebody who, uh, <laughs> through some alchemy, became high status, or be, you know, not because you love being high status, not because you should strive to be high status, not to betray yourself, betray your true self. But if it could just happen, that you were just like, just the way you are right now. So you haven't betrayed yourself but your high status instead of low status, then things would not contract so much before your eyes. Things would expand again. You would be able to uh, have people take you seriously in ways that they would not, they do not now which isn't to say that there's any qualitative difference between you low status you and high status you but but if you again through alchemy or through some fluke became regarded as high status then then I think I, I can understand why it would be easier to see a future but when you get to be the age that I am and I'm fine being the age that I am and you are the status that I am and I'm fine being the status that I am I'm not saying that to protest too much I'm saying it because I want to emphasize it um but it does have an accompanying burden that must be borne. I just, re what prompted a lot of these thoughts was I just had a frustrating exchange on social media and uh, well this isn't what prompted all of, all of these thoughts about whether death is impending or not that's that's something that's you know got a life of its own um but what i'm saying now about being an eyesore in the architecture and being uh, being not taken seriously is i, I had a just a frustrating exchange on social media. I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to name the social media site where it happened. But I do know that I was dismissed quite unfairly. And I was treated quite poorly. And I was regarded as a clown. And there was really nothing I could do. It was very frustrating. There was nothing I could do. Whereas if I'd been somebody who, oh, it's a uh, blah, blah, blah. Wow, he's talking on the social media site and he's saying blah 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 then you know I, I doubt that I, it wouldn't have happened that I'd be dismissed out of hand and and uh, treated like I'm a clown treated like I'm a um, a buffoon
treated hypocritically by people who claim to value, claim to value civility, but then go off on you and insult you if you uh, don't say what they want you to say. I doubt that would have happened if I had been of higher status. But again, lest anybody misunderstand, anybody who's actually been listening to this point, lest anybody misunderstand, I'm not saying I wish I were high status. And I'm not saying, here's some ways to improve your status, or I've got to try to, I've got to set out to make myself higher status. No, I'm just pointing out that being low status has various uh, disadvantages, obviously. And one of them is that people find you dismissible. People don't take you seriously. People uh, think you're just, you know, they, they, they just assume that you're making an ass of yourself. And they try to embarrass you. So that wouldn't happen to a higher status male. But again, one can bear it with dignity and one can uh, do what I'm trying to do right now with the, the, the ruminations of a low status male series. The uh, one can uh, offer up a series of strategies to deal with the situation. And that's what I'm trying to do course. So I just wanted to share a few of my thoughts here on the subject. It's been semi-coherent, I'm sure, but uh, this is on my fugitive page, so it's the place for semi-coherent uh, it's not rantings, but Gosh, what, a, what, what is this? Reflections. So, that's it. Thanks for watching.